part 10 of my Bone Chaperone. And I want to give a, a little bit of a summary of what I've, uh, not what I've accomplished so far, just my impression so far. I'm to the point where I can tell that it's something that I'm going to be very proud of. And, you know, you start building a ship and then all of a sudden you get to a point where you see what it's becoming and it's like a wow moment. And I've reached that. I'm kind of excited about getting the ship finished, but I also want to kind of give you an overview of where we've come from. Would I recommend the ship for a beginning builder? And I would say yes, not only for a beginner, but also for a, a skilled builder. But for a beginner, the reason I like the ship is that it has minimal planking on the under part of the ship. You can expand it by purchasing, and you'll have to purchase it yourself, some uh, deck planking. So you can do the deck, or you can leave the deck as it is with the ship. Now, on, on my example, or what I built, I did plank the decks myself, so that was extra. But you can also expand a lot of other things. I have some more furniture that I'm going to put that will be visible on the deck. I'll do that in an upcoming episode. I made cargo and put it in the lower, lowest part of the deck. I put some cargo on the front of the ship. And then if you recall on the main uh, passenger area, I, I decorated it with two grand pianos and some tables and chairs. I could have actually opened up one side of the ship like almost put a, a clear window through there so that you could see into the ship. So there's a lot that you could do with it if you're a more advanced builder. But it's also good for a beginning builder in that it forces you to research the project. Some things I wish I would have done differently. I would have read the entire manual more than once. I would make notes on that. As an example, if you compare the, uh, the blueprints and the book, I would have noticed there's actually two lanterns that hang off these large smokestacks. I would have run wire up to that and lit those two lanterns. I didn't do that. It was my fault uh, because I added the lighting. And that's another thing you can do. It doesn't have to have the lighting added. It was just something if you're more advanced you can do or if you want to try it. Uh, you can do that. Another thing that would have helped me, I would have done more precise measuring on this uh, middle deck and the little nubs that stick up, that's for the railing to rest on and I should have been more precise on, I think it was a 16th of an inch. Uh, I would have paid much, much more attention to that, much like I did on this upper deck here. This I did a good job, I made a little spacer so I know each one is just the right measurement. You may remember early on, there was a brass rod that went from the boiler back towards the cargo area. And you know, it was oh, about 12 inches long. And I just went ahead and put the whole thing all the way in. If I had done more research, I would have realized part of that brass rod is for these two cross pieces on the smokestacks. Now I just went to a hobby store and, and bought some more brass and put it through there. So. Not a big deal, not a big problem, but I should have paid more attention to that. Overall, I'm very pleased with the ship. I'm excited because it's starting to come together and I can tell that it's gonna end up being something very special. So let me give you a flyover and then I'll go into details on uh, the few things that I accomplished since episode nine. of a bonus that I got with this ship and I just thought it was on my own. I've taken and I have framed some of the blueprints. It'll help preserve these and I can hang them in my man cave. I'm working on these posts on this upper level and they need to extend 
a quarter of an inch. So let me show you how I'm working that out. I've measured approximately what it is and I've tried several different ways to cut these and actually just this little knife seems to work the best, gives me the best edge. Push that down. Then the side that is going to go on the lower portion, because I use those planks, my holes are not perfectly square like they were with the kit. So I just lightly sand off the edges of what's going to go down into that deck. So just lightly sand off the corner so it'll fit kind of a little cone shape. Then I also made this, let me set it on here. And that is one quarter of an inch, and that lets me know how high they need to stand up from the uh, upper deck. Now just take this, shove it through the pre-made hole. Once I get it part way down, then I put a little glue on that, adhesive of your choice. I'm using wood glue. Line the hole up. pretty close to where I want it to be. Now my little guide to make sure that I'm a quarter of an inch up from the deck. And actually this one's a little, that one's almost right on the money without forcing it down. But normally I take this hammer and tap it in a little bit. I've been going back and putting a little dab of uh, CA glue behind the top one especially when it's a tight fit where that really, I didn't push it down in very far. You can see them in place. Got this other side done. On some of the brass parts, especially the railings, I noticed that one end has a thick end and the other is thin. What that would mean to me logically is that the two thin parts would go together. As let me show you what I mean here. So here's the opposite end that is thin. And these two would go together wherever the seam meets on the ship. I'll show you that once I get it glued in place. But that just would make more sense because it lines up just right. But that's a subtle thing. And if you didn't notice it uh, right off the bat, you might accidentally put the two wide ends together, which I think those will be the two ends. This is the bow of the ship, and this would be the stern. Here the railing is in place. I'm very happy with that. And I just cannot bring myself to paint the brass. Eventually, maybe someday I will, but for now I'm gonna leave it brass. And it's the same thing with these deck supports. I mean, I just could not bring myself to paint those white. So I'm gonna leave the brass brass. I think with time it will darken. And to me, I think that'll be just fine. Another area that I've worked on, there was a little gap between here where I made this bend and it didn't get in there nice and tight. So I put some wood putty in there. I'll uh, take a little moist sponge, wipe off the residue, and then I'll just repaint that black and you'll never see it. And it eliminates that gap. So I had one on this side, and I also have one over on this side. Now that I've finished the railing and these deck support parts, I'm gonna move over and start concentrating on what I think is called the Texas, that's this building, and then the pilot house up here. I will probably put the pilot house together as a separate unit, before I start this, and that will be in the next episode. That concludes part 10 of my building the chaperone. And this is Boiler Dan One, where my motto is, I know a little bit about everything, a whole lot about nothing, and as always, thanks for watching.